Unit 3 is an introduction to proofs. And I know that may sound intimidating right now, but you've been doing this your whole life when you've been you know, constructing arguments in your English class or debating a friend, you've been proving your point of view to these people. And the way you usually, you usually do that is that you lay out your, your argument. You say, okay, well, this is one part of the argument. Then you take that and you extend it a little bit further until you've made your point. Oh, this cartoon down here is kind of a way that you can visualize how proofs work, where one thing leads to another. So we have this guy here, uh, the hare is tickling the donkey, then the donkey kicks this um, the spoon, the spoon then splashes this guy in the face, then he goes and grabs the tissue, which pulls the rope, which spins the gear, which spins the pole, and then the paintbrush paints it. So one thing leads to another, and I'm sure you've seen videos of something like this on TikTok or something. So this is how we will um, construct our proofs. One thing will lead to another, and then by the end of it, we prove what we've been trying to prove the whole time. So some vocabulary for this unit. The first one is called a conditional statement. So it is a logical statement that has two parts. Logical statement. that has two parts. It has a, a hypothesis and a conclusion. And you, you may remember those terms from science class. If then form, that is a type of conditional statement of conditional statement where the if part is the hypothesis and the then part is a conclusion. Now, we will be almost exclusively dealing with if then, uh, if then forms of statements. So that what is the hypothesis? It's kind of like your, your guess. It's the if part, the first part of our conditional statement. Okay. It is after the word if comes after the if. All right. Then the conclusion is the second part. Second part uh, comes after. then. So these are the, the definitions that we will be using for this unit. So we're going to write some definitions in if-then form so you can kind of see how this works. So perpendicular lines, we're going to write that in a conditional form. So if two lines intersect 
and form right angles. So that's our hypothesis, the first part. Then the lines are perpendicular. That is our conclusion. And then parallel lines, if two lines do not intersect, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so our hypothesis is you know, two lines do not intersect, the inclusion, then the lines are parallel. Then the last one, segment bisectors, if a segment is bisected, then the segment has a midpoint. So our hypothesis, if it's bisected, well, what happens if it's bisected, then the segment has a midpoint. So these definitions are just written here um, in this way to give you an idea of how an if-then statement is written. Let's look at the next page and another term we have is called a counterexample and that is exactly how it sounds. It goes, it's an example that disproves your statement. So an example, and instead of saying that disproves, we can say that proves a statement is false. And it doesn't matter if there's a hundred examples that prove the statement correct. All you need is, find, is to find one example that proves the statement is false. And then that's a counterexample. Only one counterexample makes the whole statement false. So if I would say something like, um, all math teachers are male, you would just have to find one female math teacher as a counterexample, that makes that statement completely false. So let's look at some examples of conditional statements and figure out if they're true or false. And if they're false, we need to find a counterexample. First one says, if the sum of two numbers is positive, then the two numbers being added are both positive. So what that is saying is if I have two numbers, and when I add them, I get a positive number. So like three plus two is five. So my result, my sum is positive, that means the two numbers that I added originally must be positive. Well, that isn't necessarily true. If I have negative 2 plus 3, that equals 1. These two numbers that I'm going to underline in blue, or pink, these two numbers that I underline in pink, they add up to a positive number, but I have a negative 2 right here. So that makes the statement false. All you, need, all you need to do is find one counterexample. All right, if an angle measures 112 degrees, then it, it is an obtuse angle. Well, that's true because the definition of obtuse is any angle that is measured more than 90 degrees. So this is two, true. You will not be able to find an angle that's 112 degrees that is not obtuse. C says if a power... If, if a number is a power of 2, then it is a multiple of 4. So remember, powers of 2 is like 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th. Well, 2 to the 1st power is 2. 2 to the 2nd power is 4. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. 2 to the 4th power is 16. 
And a multiple of four means like you can count by four. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, like counting by fours, all those numbers are multiples of four. So you say, okay, we have four, that's a multiple of four, eight's a multiple, four, multiple of four, 16's a multiple of four, but back here, two, two is not a multiple of four, so this is false. And the last one says if 3x plus 10 equals 6, then x equals 2. Well, if we were to solve that, three x equals six, x equals two. So that is true. All right, then the last example of the day is converse. And I'm not talking about the shoes, I'm talking about the definition. And the converse is formed by switching the hypothesis and the conclusion in the if-then statement. So this is formed by switching the hypothesis and conclusion. So an example of an, of an if-then statement could be, if you study for the test, then you will pass. The converse of that will be, if you pass the test, then you would study. So it's just switching the place of the hypothesis and the conclusion. So up here, we could have done that as well. We could switch the hypothesis and the conclusion, and that would be known as the converse of this statement. So what we're going to do in example five is write the converse of each of those statements in example four, and then determine whether that converse is true or false. And if it's false, give a counterexample. So the original statement in A was if the sum of two numbers is positive, then the two numbers being added are both positive. The converse of that would be if two numbers being added are positive, then the sum is positive. Okay, so that's different than what the original statement said. This one now says, if two numbers being added are posit positive, so I have two numbers that are positive, that means the sum is positive. Well, that's true. A positive number plus a positive number will always equal a positive answer. So this is true, which is different than up here, where I said, if the sum of two numbers is positive, then the two numbers being added are both positive. So just because the conditional statement is false, doesn't mean the converse would also be false. Then letter B, the original statement was, if an angle measures 112 degrees, that it is an obtuse angle. The converse of that would be if an angle is obtuse, then the angle is 180 degrees. Not 100, sorry, not 180 degrees, 112 degrees. And that is not true because if an angle is obtuse, it could be any measure between 90 and 180 degrees. So that is false. 140 degrees is obtuse. So this was an example where the conditional statement 
which was if an angle measures 112 degrees, then it is an obtuse angle, was true, and the converse is false. That won't always be the case, so you need to look at the statements on their own and determine if they're true or false. Then letter C, the original statement says, if a number is a power of 2, then it is a multiple of 4. Then, and we said that was originally false. The converse would read, if a number is a multiple of 4, then it is a power of 2. So our multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, well wait, 12, this is not a power of 2. So that is false. Remember, a power of 2 is like 2 to the first power, 2 to the second power, 2 to the third power, and so on. So the conditional statement was false, the original one, and the converse was also false. Then letter D, the original conditional statement said, if 3x plus 10 equals 16, then x equals 2. Well, the converse would be, if x equals 2, then 3x plus 10 equals 16. And that is true. If you take 2 and plug it in for x, you get 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 10, which is 16. So this is true. This was an example where the conditional statement and the converse are both true. So I know that using these definitions correctly is going to take time. So you need to practice using them when you are asking questions or when you're using the discussion board or writing in your homework. Using these term, terms in, in our conversations will help you learn them faster. So if need be, go back to our definitions up here. So you can... You know, refresh your memory on what you know, a conditional statement is, a hypothesis, a conclusion, and know what we're talking about. So that is it for this video. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe.